Welcome to this episode of Leaders of Transformation. I am so excited to be here with Lee Evans. Lee is the CEO of SurveyMe, and we're gonna to talk to him about, he's gonna tell us actually, about SurveyMe and what they're doing, and uh, I'm excited to have you here, Lee. Well, Welcome. thank you, Nicole. Uh, great introduction. Oh, fantastic. Well, you know, and, and Lee and I had the opportunity, and I'll give a shout out to Penelope Atkinson, who I met at uh, UCI recently, and she was sharing with me a little bit about what SurveyMe is all about. And for those of you entrepreneurs out there, you're going to want to really pay attention to this because this is going to transform your business, your, your customer uh, relationship uh, satisfaction. Would that be right, good yeah. to say that? Yeah. And so we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. But before we do that, Lee, why don't you tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial experience, because I know you've had an incredible journey and uh, inspiring journey. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. OK. Well, I mean, my, my journey started um, a long time ago, I think, but born out of necessity, um, really, when I was very young. My first um, business was a, a, a junk stall. Um, so I had a booth at the end of the street and I would sell anything that anybody else didn't want and I was aged um, seven years old at the time. And that was in the UK? That was in the UK, okay. yeah. Um, and I suppose my first real venture um, was um, a business called Bear Factory. So for those of you that know Build-A-Bear, the concept Build-A-Bear, um, Build-A-Bear bought Bear Factory. Um, so Build-A-Bear was primarily in the UK. So you I'm built sorry, it up and then they bought it from you? I, I, was, I built it up in Ireland and um, with Hamleys in London, uh, we built it into an international business and Build-A-Bear then bought um, Bear Factory. Nice. And, and Bear Factory was really the genesis of Survey Me. Mm. So when I first started, it was with a, um, a bear, a box, and in St. Stephen's Green. And I went to sell my idea to the CEO of the largest department store in Dublin in a place called Brown Thomas. And he said to me, he said, I don't think this will work. So I went and I, I sat with my bear, then the bear head poking out of the box, and, um, and all the children and all the parents um, sat next to me on the bench um, saying, oh, where can I get that bear from? And I said, do you know what, what is, what is it about this bear um, that you like? And they said, and they gave me lots of feedback. And I thought, do you know what? I think this could be a great concept. Who could, can you imagine, I mean, building a bear? I mean, how simple and yet what a yeah. lucrative opportunity and. Yeah, know, but it's, it, it's, cool. it's the emotional oh, contact that yeah. we have with teddy bears. And You're just a big teddy bear, that's what it is. Well, yeah, I, I try. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, you know, there's a lot of emotion attached, and um, yeah. what we tried to do was create an exp experience for people and for entertainment yes. and, and I've actually studied this as part of my MBA okay. um, so developed this whole thing now what evolved then from the the bear the box and Stevens Green um, was my first shop so I used to sit there and sew the teddy bears myself wow. um, but every time that we interacted with a customer we got feedback from them we learned what it was about that we did that was unique what it was that we um, could do to improve the process. Mm. Um, and I put in together all those learnings into that first shop. Um, after that, um, we opened two, three, four shops very quickly. And we, we went from me, a bear in a box, to a five and a half million dollar company in the space of 12 months. That's a lot of bears. That's a lot of bears, bears. and that's a lot yeah. of learning. And when you yes. go from you to 100 employees as well, Wow. Um, what happens is, and, and anybody in business right now will know that what happens is you, you inevitably lose contact with the, your customers yes. and all your frontline team. Um, yeah. So I thought, well, things were going well, um, but then we started to believe our own success. Mm -hmm. And there was one famous um, occasion um, where we almost lost the business in the space of 24 hours. Wow. Because of one bad decision I'd made. Um, you thankfully, don't have to tell us that decision, but that must have been an exciting 24 hours of... It was a nerve-wracking decision. I can tell you the yeah. decision was we decided to go with a new type of bear. It was an Irish wolfhound. We built it for the Special Olympics. Um, we believed that everyone wanted our bears, and yet no one wanted this bear. Oh, wow. And um, we, we were literally saved 
on the last day of the Special Olympics by everyone buying this one bear. Um, wow. And um, this was the only time I'd ever made a decision without consulting my customers or my frontline team. Mm-hmm. And had I done that, that's yeah. a lesson in you know the lean startup model is is you know it's very different than a lot of old school business. It's about you know you should know all the answers, right? A lot of entrepreneurs that are listening out there, you know, you, we get this this thought that we need to know all the answers, and the truth is you don't. You can ask your customers the answer. You can you can engage with them and collaborate with them to building a far better product than you can ever build. You know, trying to yeah. think think it up and and then put all this money out. Which how, how often do we see that, right? People put all this money out, yeah. thinking that they've got this brilliant idea, and then realizing that, well, you know, maybe they just missed the mark. Maybe yeah. a little bit, or maybe it could be a huge thing. So um, lean startup, you know, the process of of really yeah. adapting, adjusting, and putting something in the, something in the market. Maybe in, even if it's ugly initially, yeah. you know, and yeah. kind of like not so great. I mean, that's what Microsoft has done, right? That's what Apple has done. Correct. And they just, ad- they adjust and they adapt and they check in and then they keep doing yeah. it. And so, and, yeah, And I'm, I'm going to tell you as well, that's what yeah. SurveyMe has done. Yeah. Okay, so if I, yeah. if I um, when I was setting up SurveyMe, the, um, the two principles that I um, always said was, um, if we make our clients' lives easier, this thing gets done. Whatever mm. this thing is, whether it's a new product, whether it's a new pricing point, whether it's a new service, whether it's a new feature, um, whether it's a new collateral, if this makes our clients' lives easier, we prioritize it. Yeah, also, if it's, if it's unique, then, and, it's, and it makes our clients' lives easier, then it goes higher up the priority level. Mm. And a great, uh, like a great friend of mine um, said to me, and this is really for every, every startup um, that's out there right now, um, there's no point in launching a new product without first doing market research, yes. because that's just like filling a, a bathtub with water and not putting the stopper in the mm. bathtub. So no matter how much more water, how much more resource, how much more money you put into the bathtub, if you haven't already done your research to understand what it is that people will value about yes. your concept, yeah. then just don't do it. Spend time. Do your research. Great, um, great lesson. Yes. And, and then you get to an ugly first duckling of a product. Yeah. Um, and you, you've got a couple of clients. You understand you know, what it is they like. Um, so we spent 12 months in alpha version with mm-hmm. Survey Me, mm-hmm. and, I, and I still look back at the, the original um, Survey Me mm-hmm. product, and, and I just laugh about how rubbish it was. Um, I'm going to tell you guys the the first the first thing that we ever produced. Um, we completely avoided the the biggest benefit that we have, um, the biggest challenge that we now overcome, which, with all survey methods, is response rates. Mm. Um, and because we weren't engaging with customers, we were getting the same results as everybody. So, email, till receipt systems, um, web surveys, you know. The biggest challenge that all survey systems and all customers have and businesses have is getting high response rates. And the reason why people don't give feedback is because they're not engaged, because they're not rewarded. So listening to my clients in that first 12 months, they said, do you know what would be really good if we just gave something to our um, clients to say thank you? Mm. And a couple of the more advanced um, clients actually told us that's what they were doing. So I said, well, okay, why don't we do that for you as part of the app? And that was the thing that changed. And the moment we hit that eureka moment with listening to our clients, we went from me working in a bedroom, in my spare bedroom, um, through to suddenly we went to 60 countries in in the space of three months. And now we're well above 150 countries. That's fantastic. So 150 countries in how long? Uh, that is now four years, four 250 years. countries. Yeah, um, yeah. so sometimes that it seems like you're going slower, right, rather than just producing this, you know, waiting until you produce this, you know, fancy product that you're hoping that everybody likes. Right. But in fact, it's actually a faster process yeah. to success because you're actually asking and checking in with your audience. Now, now let's, for our audience that doesn't know what SurveyMe is, let's talk about what it actually is okay. specifically. Yeah. I mean, the name kind of says it, but let's yeah. talk a little bit more specifically what it is. 
Yeah, sure. Um, so SurveyMe is, a, is a, f a free mobile app that any business can use um, to gather real-time customer or employee feedback. And the way that they, they gather that is through the free app or through um, the web. Um, and they get high response rates by exchanging feedback for um, coupons. So marketing rewards, which they decide. And the, the customers or the guests or the employees can either use the, the coupons there and then, so in the point of experience, or they can save them into a wallet within the app as a, as a mobile coupon. Got so it. what that enables businesses to do, as well as being able to make um, better business decisions faster, mm -hmm. is, is also to upsell, to cross-sell, to repeat-sell opportunities mm -hmm. to their existing customers. That's brilliant. That yeah. is brilliant. So you've got two sides. You've got the client that is your your the business owner yep. that uses the app to reach their their customer base, yep. and then you have the customers on the other side that can download this app and utilize it. And so I think when we were talking uh, the last time, you were mentioning how. Uh, they can, let's say they go to one place and they download that app and then they can see all the other companies that also have this feature yep. so that they can, they, they can be incentivized to give them surveys as well and so it's just compounding that effect, is that yeah, correct? That's, that's yeah. correct. I mean, so imagine it's a bit like a, a social network. Um, so you go into a, a movie theatre, for example, mm -hmm. and you give feedback and you get a free popcorn and you um, give them feedback. And the feedback is about um, improve, helping the cinema improve your guest experience. Mm -hmm. But then there are maybe some restaurants or some businesses around the cinema. Mm -hmm. um, and because you've used Survey Me the first time in the cinema, mm -hmm. the restaurants and the, and the um, retail can also ask you for your opinion mm -hmm. and attract you to come to their business as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, and we incentivize people who are helping us right now to help get the word out. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a very unique model. That is amazing because, you know, when we talk about transforming business and transforming the way people interact with their customers, I mean, that's that's what you're exactly doing and, and you're sharing that with business owners and, and uh, it's fantastic, so love it. Thank you for sharing uh, with us what you're doing. Um, now, I know that you have a backstory to all of this mm -hmm. about how you became an entrepreneur in the first place, and it was before the Bears. It was long before that, yes. and so maybe you can share with us that story. Yeah, sure, sure. Very inspiring. Thank you. Um, well, I, if you're familiar with the the great English classic book um, by Charles Dickens, yes. uh, Great Expectations, mm -hmm. and in there the central character is a um, a guy called Pip. Um, and Pip has an anonymous benefactor. Right. So I guess I'm a modern day Pip. Okay. So when I was young, I was quite talented, sporting. Um, I guess I had a head for business, but as I said, that was kind of a born out of necessity. Um, and I think um, when I was 15 years old, I had my qualifications to go to college. So uh, I was years ahead of my, my peers. Yeah. Um, and a... Um, I had an anonymous um, visit um, through the church um, because I used to study at the back of the cathedral. It was the only place where I could study because mm. um, it was nice and quiet. And someone made in inquiries about me and um, I was offered the chance to go and um, really experience um, what top level education was like um, and given many opportunities um, in to experience things that I would never have otherwise um, experienced. Um, so I never knew who this, um, this anonymous benefactor was. And uh, I only found out about seven years ago um, who, he wa who he was. And so somebody, somebody actually said, hey, I want to support your future, your success, yeah. and I'm going to pay for your education. Yes. Somebody that you don't know. Somebody that I'd never met. That's amazing. Okay. And he had three guys that used to travel around the UK, United Kingdom, and um, hear of stories of young, talented people from maybe slightly disadvantaged backgrounds yeah. um, who may become future leaders of industry, of communities, mm. of business. Um, and his idea was to basically help those people 
mm -hmm. um, and help their families and help their communities. Mm. So he sponsored 1,400 children. Um, wow. He never knew our names. Wow. Um, we never knew his name. Um, and they then set up a foundation uh, in his name. And um, I found out only seven years ago when I got a letter because my parents live at the same address. And they said, did you ever wonder? And I was like, of course. Absolutely. You know, I was the first child yeah. in my family to go to university, to college. Yeah. Um, and since then, everybody's been to college. And yeah. you know, the great things that we've created um, here at Survey Me would probably never have happened um, without that, that one guy helping me out. And they, um, they've only found, um, sorry, those 1,300 of us, they found um, 400 of us so far. And the only way that we know um, that we are one of uh, Lord Rank's um, people uh, mm -hmm. from the early days um, was because of um, we have the same stories. Mm. So we were allowed to go on to um, big sailing ships. And for me, I had to sail this ship with a crew of other people that I'd never met. Um, so this was this was before you got the scholarship, or was it this afterwards? This is part of it. So it's all part of it. It wasn't just the scholarship. Um, he set us challenges. Wow. Um, and we were never we were never told that we were being set challenges. Uh, we were just offered. So I was offered the chance to go on a tall ship, and mm -hmm. and sail it round the the, you know, the Atlantic. That's um, and of course, being who I am, I said yes, please. Yeah. You know, Sign any me up opportunity, for that. I'll yeah. have that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and just all the things that um, happened for me, um, as it turns out, happened for many other people. Mm. Um, I don't know what it was that um, they saw in me, um, but when I meet some of the other, we call rank fellows now. Mm -hmm. So when I, I meet some of the other rank fellows, you put us in a room, we're literally all the same. Um, mm. And and everybody's I, successful, everybody's in business. Everybody is successful in their own ways. You know, you've got some people who are public servants, mm -hmm. teachers, professors, researchers, people in business, um, yeah. but every one of us um, has paid it forward without being asked to pay it forward. Yeah. We've never been asked for money. The, the Rank Foundation is now a very public foundation, um, but back then it was true Victorian private philanthropy. Wow. Um, and in my own personal story is um, the current Lord Rank through the foundation said to me a few years ago, Lee, if I gave you one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, you know, what would you do with it? And I said to him, "Well, look, you know, this is this is what I would do. I would open up a centre um, for young entrepreneurs who are from disadvantaged backgrounds, mm -hmm. not far from my own, my where I grew up, um, and I would give them the the, the necessary basics um, to help them get started in business." So we set up a um, we set up a foundation called the Mersey Youth Support Trust in Liverpool, in my home city. Um, and so far, in the last three years, over a hundred businesses have started there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you that 99 of the 100 businesses have been a success. Wow, okay. that's amazing! Because when you look at the the failure rate in business, yeah, it's I mean they say it's 95 percent failure rate. Yeah, I actually was you know. I didn't really quite believe that, right? So I actually went to, um, I was, I'm originally from Canada, so uh, now living in the US, but originally from Canada. And I actually went on StatsCan, uh, Stats Canada, and, uh, and checked that out. And that was uh, very accurate, yeah. that 95% of businesses fail. For you to have 99 out of 100 businesses succeed, yeah. that is uh, unheard of. And, and I've, I've yeah. actually been asked, you know, why, why do you think it's such a success? Yeah. Um, and it's a little bit, I suppose it's a microcosm of every entrepreneur I know. Um, the first thing is that anybody that comes to MIST um, is passionate and committed to what they're doing. So they've right. got an idea and they're really passionate and committed. So that's the, I think that's the step you need um, to believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, the really successful ones, and this probably goes for all 99, have an element of fear or revenge <laughs> okay. about their, their business. Okay. So, so talk um, a little bit about what, what do you mean by that? Well, so if you have come from somewhere where you, um, you know, where you've maybe lost it all, mm -hmm. um, maybe that maybe that you've got a business, it started, 
um, you don't want to go back to where you came from. Right. And one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite clients actually told me that once. He said, mm. Lee, I have come from, I used to rent a, a social house. Um, he now runs a $10 million business. Mm. He said, um, I was selling his business for him. He said, I just do not want to go back to where I came from. And I immediately understood mm. his passion, his drive mm -hmm. for succeeding. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when you're talking to, it, at MIST, people who have been on the wrong side of the law, spent some time in, in prison, mm -hmm. can't get a job, but have a business idea, or you know, a single parent um, who is struggling, um, or someone who's been long-term unemployed, or maybe someone who's got a health issue, mm -hmm. um, which means they can't get a job. Um, they are so driven because they're driven by fear mm -hmm. or less, less than fear. I think um, some people we meet, um, you know, have started a business up and that business, um, their business partner has gone off and, you know, right. and, and hurt them. Yes. And, their, and, their fit and their passion or their, their success is driven by revenge. And I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah, you left me. Yeah, you, yeah. you. I'm better you, than. Yeah, I'm I better than this. I can do this. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, passion and commitment. I would say are the key ingredients to get mm. started. Um, obviously, understand what what it is you're doing that your potential clients like and need. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I think underpinning most entrepreneurs, and and I will say that's why 99 out of 100 have succeeded. Yeah. Is because there's some basic primitive level of fear or um, yeah. Revenge. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make. I, yeah. It's not that I'm going to make this work. I have to make this work. Right. Yeah. Right. There's not an option. There's, failure yeah. is not an option. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's a really, really great. So much that Lee has shared with us in that little. You know, just even thinking about the ripple effect. Can you imagine the ripple effect that you can have? You know, some of you that are out there that are. Uh, successful and you're like how do I make a difference how do I now pay it forward to others and there is such a you know such a lesson here and how you can pay it forward and you can you know it's not about getting the accolades it's really about you know doing it because you want to do it not because of you know somebody patting the back and saying good job you know and to that ripple effect that that Lord Rank has developed. I mean, just imagine the businesses that are out there. Imagine the impact that has been created as as a result of one man's choice yeah. to to be that kind of you know generous. And then the other thing, of course, was now you're paying it forward, yeah. Lee, and you're paying it forward and 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 helping others. And and you know when you talk about the the desire. You know this, and it's interesting because I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, and and you know they'll say I have to be successful, and I say, well, you don't have to be successful. Everybody, you know, you can you can see people every day that choose not to be successful, and so there's always that choice. Yep. But I get what you're saying because it's the have to of this is not an option. You know, if you want to be successful in business, it's not an option. You know, of whether or not, well, maybe I'm going to make this work. It's this is the lean startup model. It's like yep. we are going to be successful. We may have to take some detours. We've all taken yeah, detours. Right. You know, we may have to take some detours along the way. But the question isn't whether or not we're going to get to the destination. Well, not that we're going to get whether we're going to get successful. It's how we're going to do it. When are we going to get there? Is maybe a different, you yeah. know, different question. So yeah, absolutely. Great. I mean, having your, you know, someone said to me about you know about leadership in business as yes. well, and I said, well. You know, leadership in business is for me having your core set of values yes. and and sticking to them. Yes. Um, so, for example, with the the pay it forward mm -hmm. idea. Yes. You know, early in my life, Lord Rank obviously helped me, mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I do at Survey Me, for example, um, we don't shout about it um, because if we, I always feel as if we shout about this thing. Um, people were saying, well, you're only doing that for publicity. Yeah, you I'm let not. it show for itself. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that we do is we give Survey Me free to every not-for-profit. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, whether that's a, a church, whether that's a, a, you know, a registered charity. Yeah. Um, and that's something I, I truly believe in as um, my personal philanthropy, my personal pay it forward. And, yeah. you know, the team's Using what you have. Yeah. You're using what you have. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I recognize that those people working in that, the third sector, if you mm -hmm. like, are, um, are, are working really hard without any necessary, um, 
you know, recognition or financial gain. Yeah. So whatever we can do as a company, whatever I can do personally yes. as a, with my, you know, with what we've created, then we should contribute that for the, the, the betterment of, you know, society. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And, and I get some calls from people who, you know, run not-for-profits and they say, hey Lee, fantastic, thank you. You know, you helped us prove what we do and the value what we do. And, and, then, and we've got, just got this check from, you know, from a person and, and that's just made us sustainable for another 12 months. Yes. And, and, and those stories I just absolutely love. Yes. Um, you yeah. know, but I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and, I, awesome. and you can see probably in my eyes that I, you know I can think of people as yeah. we're you know as I'm talking right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So, what are so for some of our listeners and, and viewers out there, what are some tips if they're an entrepreneur and they want to make a difference? Because this is the Leaders of Transformation podcast, right? This is this is about people that want to make a difference, may not know how to do it, may not even have a lot of resources to do that. Yeah. How, what, would you, what would you tell them uh, about you know, what they can do? What are some tips for them yeah, getting I th- started? I think getting started, there's, there's, um, it's all about action. Mm. Okay? So you're not going to get started by sitting on your, your sofa. Um, and, I, and I would challenge you to do, you're listening to this right now or watching it right now. Yeah, go and, listen to this, but say, then go you know, do something afterwards. <laughs> go and do something less yeah. boring instead. <laughs> um, Although you know, you're, you're pretty interesting, I have to say. You. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, go, go out there. You've got an idea, go and test it. Um, yeah. and, and I would say, go and test it um, in this way. Ask a question okay. this way. Um, if I was going to do, I'm no, sorry, I am thinking of doing X, mm-hmm. which will help you mm-hmm. do Y or mm-hmm. achieve Y. Mm-hmm. If I didn't do this, mm. how disappointed would you be? Yeah. And give them four options. Very disappointed, somewhat disappointed, not disappointed at all, I wouldn't use X. Okay. That's good, yeah. If you get 40% of people saying very disappointed or somewhat disappointed, then you have an idea that mm. might fly. The chances are 40% people saying very disappointed or somewhat disappointed will be the genesis of a great business idea. Mm. If you don't get 40%, mm-hmm. um, rework your idea. Don't give up, just rework how you phrase it's it. The the this, is the, this is the detour. <laughs> this is the detour. Because when you yeah. get to that, being able to say to someone, I am thinking of doing this, whether mm-hmm. that's launching a new product mm-hmm. or discontinuing an idea, you know, yeah. I'm thinking of discontinuing this product. Yeah. Um, how disappointed would you be? Your potential customers are going to tell you mm-hmm. um, what they, you know, what they think. Yeah. Um, and if you get enough, um, so, you know, with, Sur- with Survey Me, for example, um, we always ask people, we're going to do this. How disappointed would you be if we didn't do it? Mm-hmm. Um, and if they say very disappointed, then you know, it's, a, it's something that we do. Mm-hmm. You make a great point because it's not just for the, um, not for the, not just for the idea that you're planning to launch, it's also if you're planning to discontinue a product. Yeah. And uh, it's like Coca-Cola coming out with Coke Classic and then realizing, ooh, bad idea, you know, and having to change it around. So yeah. that, is, that is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for, you know, I, I, appreci- I, I hope you're listening out there and you're watching and you're, you're getting some insights and inspiration for yourself and what you can do yeah. in, uh, in your own business and your own venture. So, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I would say, you know, don't give up. Yes. Never give up. Yes. Uh, because... Just because someone didn't get it the first time, yes, that just means that you've got to find a different way of communicating it. Yes, um, and and really, you know, there are a series of detours, and every so often, and you manage to cut off a corner. I, you know, and that's what you do, exactly. right? That's what actually survey. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Survey me is about cutting those corners rather than wandering off in the woods somewhere and, and hoping that you know and wondering why things aren't working the way they should be or that people are not connecting to your product the way that you want them to or your service or message or whatever it is yeah. but to you know to cut that off is by checking in and, and 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 finding out what they what they want what they don't want what they like what they don't like so how do people reach you 
Okay, good question. Yeah. Uh, our website is www.survey-me.com. So okay. www.survey-me.com. Okay, great. Okay. And we'll have that actually in the show notes and make sure that's also on the screen for you so that you can find out more about yeah. uh, how you can not only as a, as a client, as a business owner, that maybe you want to utilize it for your business, but also you want to find out about this because, you know, you can, even as a customer of, uh, of different venues to, to see how you sure. can take advantage of that. And, so. and, and if you're not sure uh, about what to ask or even about new technology, then we have a great team uh, who are here for your happiness. Um, and we call them, we actually say, client happiness. Oh, nice. Um, and client success. Yes. Uh, they are their titles of people. In, and you can reach people on one 551 Okay. Uh, so Great. it's a free phone number. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Now, before we wrap up, you also mentioned something about funding, because a lot of the entrepreneurs that are watching you know, and people that are even just thinking of launching something mm -hmm. uh, that they they may not have the funding, which you know you know yeah. how th what that's like, yeah. right? Yeah. So absolutely. how did you go about funding this project? So, so particularly with you know after the the credit crunch, the last recession, yeah. you know it, it there is there's so little credit out there in the market. Um, yes. We, we had a very um, unusual um, way of funding the business to start with. Okay. So we, we obviously we had some clients mm -hmm. and we demonstrated our value to, to those clients mm -hmm. and the banks wouldn't touch us because we're an early stage company right. and we were too early for venture capitalists okay. and probably a little bit too early for crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. um, our clients actually said to me, Lee, you've delivered so much value to our business. Mm -hmm. If you ever want money, come and speak to us. So we had. That's when you know you got good clients. So. Well, well actually, but that's when <laughs> yeah. you, that's when you know that you've got a product that's really making a difference to people's yeah. lives. Yeah. So uh, I would say our first hundred and fifty thousand dollars of seed funding actually came from our clients. Wow. Uh, because they're the people who have seen your product in action, they've tried it, they've seen the value. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so we are, we, we're now um, quite, quite a lot of shareholders, mm -hmm. um, all with small amounts. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, the success of, or the, the ability to be able to refer to uh, when you're a new business, mm -hmm. that your clients have actually funded the early stage of your company. Yes. I think that, that says, um, a lot for the the success of your product and the the confidence it gives later down the road to when you're going to a venture when you're going to a venture capitalist. You say, Look, yeah. this, yeah. Yeah. So my clients, my clients back me because they like the value that I gave to them. Yeah. Um, People vote with their money. You know, exactly. they can say, "Oh, you got the greatest idea. It's going to be yeah. awesome." Yeah. You know, but when it comes right down to it, are they willing to invest? That because they, they've and they they've feel like they've hard. collaborated because yeah. they've actually given you feedback and you've taken the feedback and and used that. Yeah. And so they they feel part of it's now that's that's a that's a community that's a tribe, true yeah. tribe. And yeah. it, and it's a vindication of you know what I was saying earlier with. Mm -hmm. Um, by listening to your clients and making their lives easier and prioritizing them yes. with your product, yes. that they then turn around and say, "Well, you've done all this for us. Mm -hmm. Let us pay it forward. Yeah. You know, let us yeah. pay it back to you. Let's pay it forward. Let's get yeah. more people um, on board." Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you Thank for you. sharing. Lee, I really appreciate you and your time. I know that uh, Lee is actually here from the UK just visiting and, uh, well, visiting, doing business here. He's got lots of clients here and an office here in, in Orange County. And uh, But he's a busy guy, of course. He's only here for a certain amount of time. And so, uh, Lee, I really appreciate you um, spending the time here today and, and sharing your, your heart, your passion, and your knowledge experience with us today it's been it's been fantastic well, so, thank you very much Nicole. You. we'll have to have you back because I know we you've got lots of lots of great stories and, and lots of great insight in the business and so maybe we can we can do this again I would love to and, awesome. and, and thank you everyone for listening to uh, to us today yeah thank you yeah awesome thank you and thank you for this you know tuning in today and, and listening to this hopefully you got some inspiration you got some some education learning about business what does it take right to really 
be successful in business. This is, this is grassroots right here. Lee Evans from Survey Me is grassroots business and uh, starting with somebody actually investing in him and, and then him now taking that investment and turning it and multiplying it many, many times over and, uh, and paying it forward and helping others now. So uh, I encourage you to go to survey-me.com and find out more about what they're doing and uh, if anything, just to, to learn, understand and answer and ask and learn what kind of questions to ask your clients so that uh, you can be more effective and more dialed in to what your customers really want. Not what you think they want, but what, you, what they really, really want. So I encourage you to do that. Also go to the leadersoftransformation.com because we're gonna have all the show notes there and all the links and we'll make sure that you have uh, access to Lee Evans and survey me through the website. There's also some great resources on the leadersoftransformation.com. You can find us also on Facebook at Leaders of Transformation and the uh, Twitter handle is Leaders Podcast. And if you like this, I would encourage you and please do help us out with getting the word out. And, mm -hmm. and we're now in 65 plus countries the leaders of transformation is we're we're we're, we're trying to catch up to you. Well, we're in 50 <laughs> countries, but we're, we're you know we are in 65 plus countries, and we want to create a greater reach for our podcast so that we can inspire entrepreneurs and and people that want to make a difference in the world. And so if you can leave us a rating and review and give us a five star rating ideally, and let us know uh, you know what you love about it, that would be awesome. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Leaders of Transformation real soon. Have a great day.